Well, I'm finally getting around to this mower. I've had this one for a while now. I got it as a partial trade-in on another mower I had sold. It is complete. Uh, the deck is not on it right now. It's sitting out back. It's a uh, Bolin's mower, which it says right here is made by MTD. Um, it's got a number of little issues, uh, but the big one and the one I'm going to focus on today is the transmission. Now being that this is an MTD, uh, it is a very drive mower. You can tell because it's got two shifters. Up here you have your speeds and then down here you have your direction. Uh, now the problem this has is that reverse works fine, but when you put it in forward it either doesn't move at all or it just clunks and sputters. Uh, well not really sputter, but uh, it clunks and it jerks makes all sorts of very bad noises. The only way to get it to drive properly and forward is if you pull it like right about there and just hold it there. But if you go out of there at all, it just goes back to clunking and not moving again. Now I know this is a transmission problem because it only happens in forward. Reverse is fine. Now if it was happening in both directions, then it could possibly be an issue with the very drive system. But since it's only happening in forward, we can rule that out as a possibility. So, I'm going to go ahead and just tear this transmission out today, take it all apart and get an idea of what's going on. Get that belt off there so we can pull the transmission now. You know, that doesn't look good. Brake disc is not supposed to be covered with that much grease. Actually, it's not supposed to be covered with any grease. And there should be a brake pad in here. Yeah, there it is. There it is, the brake pad. It's not looking too great so far. Transmission's out, and it is really grimy. And there's more evidence of grease being forced out. This almost looks, it's like the grease has been turned into a liquid. And then another thing I just noticed is this pulley's loose. This nut isn't even tight. And the previous owner said he did replace the belts on this. trying to feel if there's a play in there. Yeah, there's a tiny bit of play. But we're going to go ahead and tear all of this down because that tiny, there's only a tiny little bit of play in the actual shaft itself. So I guess the, the previous owner just didn't tighten down the, uh, the pulley. 
And that's not going to be causing our problem though, so we're still going to tear this down. Tearing transmissions apart is a lot easier when they're clean. That is nasty. Ooh, that sounds terrible. This is all the grease. It's it's like a it's been liquefied. Oh, that is just nasty. And it's all like that. Now, undoubtedly, at this point, people are wondering if the grease is all runny just because I pressure washed it. The answer is no. You can see some water came out right here. That's what the water looks like. It doesn't easily combine with grease. This appears to have either mixed with some kind of oil or it's just degraded so badly that it's been liquefied. But uh, now that I'm done marveling over how nasty the grease in this thing is, let's talk about the parts. Over here, this is your final drive gear, and that contains your differential, which allows the uh, shafts to spin at different speeds. And then you have a single gear reduction, and then you have these two gears here, which control your speeds. These are each driven off of this. You can see it. They're each dri they're both driven off of this bevel gear, at the top, and then you have a little collar that engages each one. They're supposed to stand still, but they're not standing still. So that little collar will engage one gear and then the other, and that's how it changes direction. So I'm thinking right in here is where I'm going to find the problem. I've run everything through the parts washer now. Got everything pretty cleaned up. Got the cases all nice and clean. Well, they're really close to being perfectly clean. They don't need to be perfectly clean because it's going to get re-greased anyway. But uh, I did find what's going on with this uh, transmission. This is the uh, input bevel gear. It fits in there and then it spins like that. And you notice how the gears spin in different directions. Then you have reverse there. And then that is forward. So, if that would stop moving, take out of here. So, this gear here, which is, this gear here is your uh, reverse gear, and there's nothing wrong with that. That all works fine. Problem is with this and this gear. Now if you look closely at this gear, there's three teeth that engage the collar in order to select forward gear. Now I don't know if this is going to show up on the camera, but the leading edge of all these teeth is worn at an angle. The collar itself has minimal wear on the teeth. They're just kind of rounded off a little bit. But when these are coated in grease and they're together and you put load on them, what's going to happen is that wear is going to create a ramp almost. 
and it's going to make the collar want to uh, uh, pop out and like this. And that's what's going to cause all of our drive issues. I've looked through the rest of the transmission. I haven't found any damage. It's just this. The only other problem I'm seeing right now is that there's only one thruster washer here on this side and there's supposed to be two. So I don't know if this transmission was opened up before or if it's a factory defect or what, but that could have a bit of an effect on it because this shift fork has detents in it and this is the little ball detent and when it's in the detent for reverse this collar is not engaging this uh, gear fully they're a bit loose so that could have contributed to the problem so right now what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to get some new parts I'm gonna get a new gear and I'm gonna get a new collar they aren't gonna be too bad this is like 20 bucks and then this is like 10 bucks uh, so I'm gonna have to order some new parts and then I'm gonna have to get some grease specifically for this transmission because uh, lawnmowers actually don't use general purpose grease for the transaxles they use a, uh, a specialty grease so I'm gonna have to get that stuff and find a place for this to sit until I get all those parts and put it back together Well, thanks to the magic of editing, some time has now passed and I have received parts. So, what we have is a new bevel gear, new shift collar, and a new thrust washer to replace the one that is missing. Now, now that our parts problem is solved, what are we going to use to grease up this transmission? Well, from the factory, MTD specs their own lubricant. And unfortunately, they want like 20 bucks for a 9 ounce bottle of it and this thing takes 19 ounces you do the math that's really really expensive and the only other kind of uh, grease that is a direct substitute for that grease is this shell Dorena grease I'm not entirely sure but that is also apparently very hard to track down so what do we put in this transmission well we can't put gear oil in it because there's no place to fill it and it's not sealed and it'll all leak out so we can't put gear oil in it we can't use regular grease because that stuff will get too thick and it's not going to lubricate properly so what do we use the answer we use this this is NGLI grade double zero grease uh, this is a very very thin grease most greases uh, for general purpose applications that you'll come across are going to be an NGLI grade two grease this being zero, it's very, very runny. It's almost like a mixture of gear oil and grease. This will work just fine in most lawnmower transmissions. The one thing you gotta be careful of is you can't just go sticking this in any old transmission uh, and adding it to whatever is in there because if there's incompatibility issues between the, the type of grease that's in there and this grease, then that can cause transmission failure. But since we're cleaning all the old grease out of this transmission anyway that's not going to be a problem in my situation so we know we can use grade double zero grease but where do we get it well you can order it online which is kind of pricey um, most auto parts stores do not have this it's not very common it's not a common automotive application now this actually came from tractor supply if you ask people, they probably aren't going to know what they're talking, what you're talking about, because, like I said, it's not a very common uh, thing that people need. This is actually going to be near the uh, PTO drive shafts and the uh, tractor machinery stuff like that. It was just on the bottom shelf. Now, if you order something like this, you're going to be looking at spending 16 to 20 dollars. This is five bucks from Tractor Supply. So, if you need this grease. You can go to Tractor Supply and find it. Uh, it's a Super S brand. Not a whole lot of information on it. Um, I've heard it called uh, Cotton Picker Grease. Uh, the main thing is though, uh, it's just uh, gray double zero grease. Well, enough of my yammering about grease and parts and stuff. Let's go ahead and put the transmission back together.
So I was putting the transmission together and I just noticed something. This shift fork is bent. Can you see that? It goes like that. And what that means is that it is not going to engage forward all the way. So I think we just found another part of a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and bend that back. With some gentle persuasion, I straightened the uh, shift fork out so now that it'll fully engage the collar into the forward bevel gear now. You can get a look of how, at the consistency of this grease now. See, it kind of pours like an oil, but it's grease. Very thin. I'm not entirely sure how much grease that is, but it's quite a bit and it's filled up all the way to the case half, so I think that should be enough. Now these uh, bolts are all the same length which is nice. Apparently they were different lengths on the uh, earlier transmissions but on the later ones they raised these bosses up so they could use the same size bolts for all of them. Which is good for me because it makes this easier. Well, that's it. We're ready to put it back in the lawnmower. Bit of advice, make sure this belt is on the transmission pulley before you bolt the transmission in, otherwise you're just going to make your life a hassle. Here's another tip, getting the belt back onto the pulleys can be a real pain, so what you do is you take the spring off the uh, hydra right here, put the belt around all the pulleys, and reattach the spring. And this is the tool I used for those wondering. Seal puller works too.